right, all right. Welcome, welcome. So we'd like to welcome everybody to P-Town Fresh. If you never joined us before, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God and we utilize technology. I ask questions, you can ask questions, and we have a great time studying the word. Uh, let's make sure that we're good on our Facebook feed. Um, let's see here. And we will be all set and ready to roll. And if you're checking us out on Facebook, we ask you to do me a favor, give us a shout. Let us know who you are, where you're checking us out from. Um, also, we ask you to uh, do the same thing on Mixcloud as well. Give us a shout. Let us know who you are. And there we go. All right. And we are good. All right. What's up? Welcome. Love the music. All right. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name for this wonderful day you've given us. God, we thank you for everybody that's here with us in person, as well as those who are watching online. We thank you for the special uh, Friends and Family Day, Lord God, and we thank you more importantly for you and who you are, God. We thank you for your love and how you've been constant throughout the ages, God. I pray that today, Lord God, you will allow everyone to hear and understand your word and uh, allow it to apply its truths to our hearts and to our lives, God. I pray that we'll be challenged and that we will not leave here the same. We thank you and give you glory in the wonderful name of Jesus. We bless you. Amen. All right. So again, uh, welcome everybody to P-Town Fresh. So uh, we always like to start out with our question of the day. And our question of the day is, who was your first love? And what do you remember about? Now, uh, so we're going to go ahead. We have some responses, I know, from the chat. Um, and also we have a few responses on Facebook. But let's see what the studio audience has to say first. Who was your first love? Anybody want to want to share? Oh, we all shy. Nobody want to say nothing now, huh? All right, John. Okay, hold on. Let me. I, all right, let's see. All right, uh, go ahead. You got it, John. Well, I would say this girl that I met at um, the church I used to go to named Cherie. Okay. Yeah. All right. About how old were you? Probably about 19. 19, okay. You remember anything about her? Yeah. I mean, we was, we was good. We was close, you know, for a while, but... You know, after a while, we kind of just, I guess you can say, fell apart. Like, you know, she wasn't, she wasn't quite as dedicated to the church as I was, and that played a part. In it. Okay, amen. That's good. All right. Anyone else? Who was your first love, and what do you remember about them? And again, the tribe, y'all can respond as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go. All right, that's what's up. Back 40 Gully, welcome. Uh, down from, checking in from Rockford, Illinois. So um, now me, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully I won't get myself in trouble. Nah. <laughs> I know that's why some of y'all didn't want to respond because, you know, y'all, you know, some of y'all, we don't need another uh, Walter situation. <laughs> So you had to have been here for that one. That was, woo. if you know, you know. But um, so uh, for me, there was a young lady when I was in high school, a young lady named uh, Nicole Broadnax. And so uh, she was my first real girlfriend. And, you know, we were uh, very close. And uh, one of the things I remember is I remember she used to always wear these uh these jumpers, <laughs> these jean jumpers. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like oh, yeah. the, the overall. Yeah. 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 So I, I remember she used to always wear those. And um, so, yeah, that's one of the things I remember about her. And I also remember that she went to church all the time. And that was before I really, well, I, I did start going to church around that time. But let's just say she was into all, the, she listened to nothing but Christian music. And I listened to everything that was the opposite. <laughs> She tried to turn me on to the whinings and commission. And I'm like, what? What's that? You got some BBD? <laughs> some black sheep? 
All right. What's up? Welcome to my bro, Chris White. All right. So again, the question on the floor is, who was your first love and what do you remember about them? All right. Let's see what our Facebook responses were. And while some of the audience here, you know, y'all can get a chance to think about your response. And anybody on Zoom, you're welcome to share as well. All right, let's see. So where were we? Uh, um, I, 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 I'll share. <laughs> um, um, I had put it, like I said, in the, in the text chat, my first love was uh, my daughter's dad. And we were, we were very young, 13, 14 years old, but we were exchanging that L word very heavily <laughs> as if we, as if we really fully knew what that meant. But what I really remember most about him, um, like I said, is we we used to love to dream out loud and just, you know, when we turn 30, we're going to do this. And by the time we 25, it's going to be this. And we're going to be together forever. I, that, I, that I remember that. Uh, we were going to be like just a Bonnie and Clyde, if you will. Um, and that's what I remember about him, just plans for the future, planning for, planning for our future, but as kids. So... We were very overly ambitious, um, very unrealistic really about uh, what kind of house we would live in, and uh, you know our professions, careers, things like that. Okay, amen. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we also had some other responses. We had uh, Anthony Shanique, uh, Shanique Matt said, uh, "Actually, my first love was music." My spirit was improperly woven with love songs, ballads, and romance. Mm, that's real. That's a real one there. So you I know, felt that. I felt that. You know, I, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Big Ken, Kenneth uh, Leroy Porter said, uh, my first love and only love is my island princess, Tamara Joy Porter. Oh, uh, everybody say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she no, because then she would be like, "Hold up, what is somebody up?" See, me and my wife, we keep it honest. Amen. <laughs> uh, but you got to know your relationships. <laughs> All right, amen, amen. So, uh, anyone else? Uh, let's see. I know there was some other responses in the chat. Um, I, I can't read the text with my Facebook. So, so anyone else here want to respond? Going once, going twice. Okay. Ruby says her husband is a kid. Oh. Oh, y'all, you hear that, brother Chris? <laughs> you, you got that shout out. You got that love, bro. And what's up? Welcome to my bro uh, Elijah Wan White as well. Says, I plead the fifth. This question is a setup for all the marriage slash the trope men. <laughs> 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 and then Shadra said she said hers. Okay. Arkita says her mom, but her first romantic love was from her. Okay. Amen. All right, let's see. And back 40 Gully says, yes, sir, I feel that music is and was my everything. All right. And I'm not sure what's going on with the uh, signal on the uh, mix cloud right now, but we're going to ah! we're gonna keep it. Oh, I know what it is. We're going to keep pushing. We're on the wrong internet. That's why. We're going to switch for my mix cloud. Well, not, I mean, y'all are still here, but for my benefit. All right, there we go. So now uh, let's go ahead and get ready to jump in. Y'all ready? And some of y'all are wondering, you know, why are we talking about all this first love stuff in church? It's Sunday, you know what I mean? This ain't Saturday night, you know? So uh, let, let's go ahead and jump into this. So as I mentioned, we've been studying uh, here in P-Town Fresh. What we do is we actually study through the Bible uh, in order. So, you know, what a novel idea. We actually read through the Bible. So uh, 
This week, we are going to be looking in Revelations chapter 2. All right, so I want you to open up your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2. All right, and let's see what we got here. All right, and so we're looking at here, beginning in, just to give you a little context, we're going to begin in verse 1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you've tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Mm. And so it, it goes on, it, it continues on a little bit, but we're going to stop there because we'll pick up the other part next week because, you know, we, we got a lot to chew on right here. And so as we're looking at this, so let me give you a little context. Last time we were, you know, we read in uh, one through three, okay? And so we were talking about the positive characteristics of the church of Ephesus. So this is uh, a revelation. And some of you, you know, may be reading Revelation for the first time. I know that some people have this thought that they were kind of scared to read Revelation. Um, you know, like, oh, no, what's going to happen? But, you know, the thing is, it's just like a movie. You know, you see the end of it. You, and Revelation is the end of the movie. So, you know, you, you see the trailer. But, you know, you're not scared about seeing the end of the movie. So it's the same thing, especially now the only reason why you got to fear with Revelation is if you don't know whose side you're on. That's where you got the issues. Amen. So but for the believer, Revelation should be comforting. And so one of the things we see here in this uh, passage, you know, Revelation is this is God's vision that he's giving John while John is on the island of Patmos. And so, you know, we already went through chapter one. We went through that really deep. So if you want, you can check that out on our YouTube if you missed it or on Facebook Live. But now we're getting into each of the individual messages that is given to each of the seven churches. And we rep we see that the seven churches were represented by what? Lampstands. The lampstands, right? All right. And so this is what we see here. And so now, as we're looking at this, we're seeing that last time Ephesus was commended for several things. Let's see their works, their labor, their patience, their low tolerance of evil. And they didn't take everything at face value. Right. OK, so now. We get to verse four. And verse four says, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. So they, he told them all these good things that they were doing. But now I got some issues with you. And y'all remember I told you that's, you know, like the sandwich method. You know, one of the things you said, you know, I used to when I was a teacher in the classroom, you know, I have a parent conference and, you know, Miss Jones, you know, your son or daughter is, you know, had potential to be a great student. They're very smart. They interact when we have discussions, you know, all these nice things, you know, matter of fact, and I love what they did on this project here, but I have a little issue because every time when I sit them down in the seat, they always want to sit there and talk to the person next to them, right? Or they haven't completed their assignments in the last three weeks, right? And so, but again, it's that sandwich method. So you're telling them the good things that they're doing. And then now you're going to give them some, something they need to address. And he says, you have left your what? Your first love. So I want to start out with a question. What do you think was the first love of Ephesus that they left? Anyone? 
Okay. Okay. So Jesus. Okay. Anyone else? What do you think was their first love? Um, I'm not really sure. Okay. I, now this is I, I would say this. Um, and I read this whole chapter and I just I my mind is drawing a blank, but um weren't were they non believers first who were then converted to believers? Well, I'm I'm glad you asked that because what we want to do to help us to understand what was their first love, we want to go and get a little background on the church of Ephesus. Amen. So let's check out uh, Acts chapter 19. We're going to turn in the book of Acts chapter 19. Because Ephesus, it was one of those books that, you know, those churches that was so popular. There were a lot of writings regarding them. So here we get a chance to see how this church came about. But also there's a whole letter that Paul dedicated to them, Ephesians. Right. That's the a letter to the church of Ephesus. But let's take a look in Acts chapter 19. So beginning in verse one. And let's check this out. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed?" So they said to him. We've not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. Amen. And I'm reading to you from the New King James Version. So uh, that was uh, Acts 19. So now this is what I like to call. So we have we have almost two phases here. So in what I like to call phase one, the Apostle Paul arrives in Ephesus and he meets with how many people? Twelve. And initially he meets with them for how long? Three months. OK, now this is significant. So first off, let's think about it. Does that sound like a lot of people? Not really. Right now, if I look around in this room, we probably got around somewhere near about 12, right? More or less. So Paul met with 12 disciples, all right? And so then what else happened? We see that they were what? Baptized. They received the Holy Spirit. And what else happened? They spoke in tongues that weren't taught or in languages, right? And they prophesied. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole lot of, you know, a lot of doctrine and depth here because a lot of people believe different things. But I'm going to just see, see what, the word, what the word says. So initially, Paul connected with them, right? They were already believers. They already were disciples. They were beginning to follow Christ. But Paul came and, you know, they were following Christ with whatever limited understanding they had. And when they first met them, they didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. Right. All they knew, because he says, look, well, um, you know, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? They're like, what's that? We never heard of the Holy Spirit. Well, what y'all been doing then? Well, uh, we were baptized. Oh, for real? Who baptism? Oh, John's baptism. You know that dude, John. We were baptized like him. We did what he said to do. Okay. 
And so, and he said, look, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, which is turning away from, right? You know, remember, even when John the Baptist baptized, was baptizing, you know, the Pharisees came to, you know, Jesus, like, look, you know, oh, no, or was it John the Baptist? He said, no, it was, hold on, I forgot. He said, who has caused you to flee from the wrath to come, right? He said, bring forth what? Fruit, meat for repentance. And so why? Because he was like, look, when you're getting baptized, this isn't just going down dry and coming up wet. This is an, an identification and realizing and saying, look, you know what? I'm changing. I'm not the same person that I was. Right. And so this is this public announcement, this public proclamation. But then the next thing is we see. And so when they hear this. They said, oh, man, you know what, man, we were being baptized. Watch this. Just with John's baptism, we didn't even know about being baptized in Jesus' name. They were just being baptized. Hey, I'm getting baptized just like John. And so if you notice, they were in, as I like to call, V1, version 1, when already there was a 3.0. Y'all with me? They, they were still behind a little bit. But Paul still came and chopped it up with them. He let them understand. He was like, look, you know what? Now we want you to go ahead and be baptized in Jesus' name. Not just in the baptism of John. John was the forerunner of Jesus. So you, you almost there. And so... Then after he shows them and they, they're baptized, then what ends up happening? Now they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now they begin to start speaking in different languages that nobody taught them. To give you an idea, and, and literally. So me and myself right now, years ago when I was in high school, I used to take Spanish. And I took four years of Spanish. But it's been a minute. I've been out of high school now for many years, like 30 years now. So I don't remember all of that. So I, I got a little app and on my little app on my phone, I start refreshing my Spanish and I'm starting going back and learning Spanish. That's learned, right? Now, however, this is not learned. This is, they were baptized in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit began to empower them. And now they start speaking in different languages, i.e. French, Afrikaans, y y y Portuguese. Y'all understand it? That they weren't taught. All right. And then, as if that wasn't enough, what did they begin to do? Prophylline, right? No, that's what some of y'all do. <laughs> they began prophesying. They began speaking the truth, speaking and sharing about things to come. Right? And so we see this, and this starts out with how many people? Twelve. All right? Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this, start, this is a powerful start. This is a powerful start. All right? So now y'all ready to continue on? Y'all want to see what happens? And this is all in where? Ephesus. All right. And so, and for those who don't know, Ephesus is located in, um, today it's located in what we would call Turkey. Back then it was in Greece. And so, you know, the Greece borders were extended a little bit further, but now it's in modern day Turkey. But now let's watch this. So we're going to read um, we're up to verse eight. And he went into the synagogue and spoke and spoke boldly for how long? Three months. OK, so he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading, earning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, that's what they used to call Christianity, the way. They, it didn't have the title Christianity yet. It was just 
the way. He says, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude. He departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now, we about to break some stuff down here that we may not have seen or looked at or thought about. And in this next part, what he did, so we realized that also he preached in the synagogue for how long? Three months. For three months. So every Sabbath day, okay, every Saturday, he would go in and he would preach in the synagogue and he would teach them about the things about the kingdom of God, telling them about who Christ was, telling them about who this Messiah was that they had learned about. And hey, this is the guy that came. He came and changed my life, right? And so, but as we continue reading, we see that after this, he took the disciples and taught them daily in the Tyrannus school for two years. All right. Now, this is what I like to call phase two. What was the result of phase two? All of Asia heard about the Lord. Let me say that again. All of Asia heard about the Lord. Now, when we're talking about Asia, we're not talking about Asia, China, Japan, as we talk in modern Asia. We're talking in uh, Asia Minor, as it was back then. But let me put some things in perspective for you. All right. So all who were in Asia heard the gospel, both who? Jews and the Greeks. Y'all following with me? So the Jews were the ones who were following after Abraham, after Moses, right? They, they were the ones, okay, yeah, this is what we do. We gonna go ahead and we got the Ten Commandments, right? They were God's chosen people, but also even who? The Greeks. They would be considered the Gentiles. They was were the non-Jews, okay? So let me give you a little context. So Ephesus, during New Testament times, the population, because I decided, I'm like, you know what? He said all of Asia heard. I'm wondering, like, how many people is that? My mind thinks a little bit different. I didn't see a lot in a lot of commentators. You know, I, I, my mind thinks a little different. How many people is that? So, and during New Testament times, the population of Asia Minor was estimated to have been several million. Several million. Wow. Even to the point where, and even as we're looking at, just let's take a look at Ephesus, the city in question that we've been talking, that we're talking about and focusing on, their population was estimated to be between 200,000 and 300,000. They were one of the largest cities in Asia Minor. At one point, they almost were like the capital of Greece. You know, it was a port city. They had everything that was going on. So, you know, just like now, if you look at the United States, where are our largest cities? All of the largest cities are usually on a what? On a waterway. Why? Because the shipping was one of the large, the ways that they were able to do what? To ship and trade and export and import goods. Right. And so typically throughout history, large cities develop along your seaports. Right. And so Ephesus had that going for itself. All right. And in addition, Ephesus was home to the temple of Artemis or the temple of Diana, which literally during those days was one of the seven wonders of the world. That's deep. So people would look at Ephesus and the Temple of Artemis like some people look at New York and the Statue of Liberty. Y'all tracking? Okay. So now as we're getting into it, but how many did it start with? Just 12 as far as believers. 
And so from that 12, something happened that the whole nation, whole region heard about the gospel. What was that? Now, now let me give you a little, let me give you, put this in a little more perspective. Here, I live in Portsmouth, Virginia, which is in the area of the region we call Hampton Roads. Hampton Roads has a population of approximately 1.7 million people. Portsmouth has a population of about 94,000, somewhere near 100,000. Can you imagine if the same thing happened here? I know that it's more than 12 believers in Portsmouth. We definitely got more than 12 churches in Portsmouth. Y'all understanding this thing? So what is it? What is this secret sauce that we're missing? Hmm. Now, now here's a question. So they shared with the whole region through what? What would they have? Did, 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 were they paying for the website? Did, 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 did they have a smartphone app? Did they have TikTok, Evan? They, they didn't have TikTok, right? Did, did, did they have Instagram? They couldn't tweet. They couldn't do none of that, right? They And they didn't even have Facebook or YouTube. They didn't even have a car. They didn't even have the simplest of microphone. All they had was a, you know, a, 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 maybe a megaphone. It's a little, little cone shaped thing that was just literally a cone. Hey! <laughs> so how was it possible? You know what they had? They had something that Paul introduced them to. The Holy Spirit of God. Now we talk. They had the Holy Spirit of God. That's all they needed. Now, I got all this. Look, look y'all saw me this morning. And I know some of y'all were laughing like, what in the world is he doing? Doing all this technology stuff. They didn't even have this. Now, that don't mean I'm going to get rid of it. Because <laughs> we're in a different time now. But. I want you to be able to understand. Is this beginning to, to sink in a little bit? What, what are some of your thoughts going through your mind right now? They Say what? They had, faith. they had faith. Amen. What up? I feel like, I feel like nowadays we, we lost the passion to, to spread the word. It feels more like a chore. Mm. Woo! Say that again, Keontae. I thought like he lost the passion to share the gospel. It's more like a chore or a tax or a job. Like like how uh, Uncle, Uncle Aaron said, the job is just that we're broke. So we're just trying to be just that we're broke for Christ. We're just trying to be rich in Christ. Mm. Woo! Come on. Not me, myself included. I ain't trying to say like everybody. Like, right. You know? Amen. That's real. That's real. Because one of the things that we have to realize is what we are called to do as believers. You know, it, you know, some of us look at going to church or, or con connecting with the community of saints like that old Dunkin Donuts commercial. You all know what I'm talking about? Time to make the donuts. You know, you got the man who gets up at six o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, tired and sleepy eyed. Time to make the donuts. Y'all can look it up on YouTube. But this was real. This was the real transforming power. And, and let's take a look and see. Y'all want to see? Anybody want to see how this story unfolds? Yeah. All right. So let's go back to Acts 19. And all of this is helping us to answer the question of what? What was what? What? What was their first love? Y'all still tracking them, right? Okay. So now let's take a look at verse um, 11. Listen to this. Of Acts 19. Now God worked 
unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, we exercise you by the name, by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? So are, are y'all tracking and seeing what's going on here? So the first thing, now I love this story. As we see, God was working unusual miracles through Paul. Now, when now, and, and just think about this. First of all, let me, and I'm going to clarify, because when we think of unusual, some of your Bibles may say special. But when I did a little bit of research, you know me, I like to go in the Greek and the Hebrew. And so the word that was used to translate as unusual is the Greek word tachano. All right. Now, you know what that word means? To hit the mark. Mm. And the root of it is to be effective. So when we think of these unusual miracles, these special, it's not like what we think. What he's talking about, these weren't just unusual or special miracles, but what I like to use is the word prescribed. These were prescribed miracles. They were spirit inspired, they were in spirit empowered, and they were designed to hit the mark. Now, why is that important? Because they weren't generic. How many of you have been to the pharmacy? And, and, and you know, when you go to the pharmacy, you can get a couple of kinds of prescriptions, right? You can get the generic or the cheap, which many of us like to do, or you can get the brand name, which is usually the same thing, but just lower costs. But in this case, it wasn't even just that. This was an individually concocted combination for each person. So imagine if the pharmacist came up and gave you and said, okay, you know what? I'm going to go in and bet and I'm going to get three things for the trees from you, for you, or this, so many leaves over here, and I'm going to mix this for you. This is literally the level. It wasn't, I'm going to just take something off the shelf. See, the problem is so many of you are looking for these miracles, but you're looking after a generic miracle. God has never intended to bring generic miracles. And so that's why, and, and what's happened is in recent times, we become so caught up chasing after these fads. Oh, he just blew and he fell down. All he did was, I'm a huff and I'm a puff and I'm a blow. I thought that was the, I thought that was the, what, the, the, the three pigs, not the church. But you got people saying, oh, I'm going to just, Oh, you ain't going down. I'm going to go over and blow on you. What is this foolishness? It has nothing to relate to the gospel. What, you, what you've made this is you've made this a circus act. Talking about, oh, well, you know what? I, I got this water right here that came from the Holy Valley of Israel, and I'm going to sell it to you, and you can be yours for $19.99. Y'all don't y'all remember them BET commercials late at night? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because what happens is people try to pimp the gospel. They try to pimp artifacts of the gospel. And, and then you got people. And, and so let, let's make this real, transparent. God used Paul's used handkerchiefs to heal people. Exactly. Exactly. Y'all understand it? Now, now y'all walking around and chasing after miracles and, oh, well, this person did this miracle this night and this and that. 
This was something unique. This was something that was a need. See, one of the things we got to realize, see, we think that we got the power of God and we possess it, but it's his power. It's his power. It's just like if one back in the day, if I asked somebody to borrow their vehicle and I go out and stun in it, it ain't mine. They, they do it all the time. Look, I did one time, my brother, my buddy uh, had a, uh, what was it, a BMW, my man Booker. It looked, had the, 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 the drop top. He was like, yeah, you know, look, y'all can go on out. We cruised, took some pictures in it. Look, I even put a picture on Facebook messing with people. Look how God is blessed. And I did that intentionally because I know some people's response. Are, are y'all understanding this thing? And so we've got to be careful. We got to be careful because the Bible says a foolish generation that asks for a sign. We got to be careful about chasing after these signs and miracles. Amen. Mm. Is anybody hearing me today? I know I done made some of y'all mad. It's okay, though. Y'all will be all right. It's the word. And look, his used aprons, his work clothes, y'all. How many pastors you know or leaders you know that giving up their work clothes and, and people getting healed with it? Are y'all understanding this thing? This is what was real. This was something authentic. This was Hitting the mark of the needs of the people. Why? Because who's the one that determines what the people need? God. And so therefore he sees that somebody's in need and therefore he creates the ultimate concoction to fix and heal them. Amen. And so now I got a question. How many of you will admit to owning a knockoff item sometime in your lifetime. Y'all yeah. know what I mean by knockoffs, right? I, I look, can, can I be real with y'all? I'm, I'm going to be real because y'all. some of y'all may not share, but I'm going to share. Y'all know me. I don't mean mind being tra transparent. So I remember back in the day, how many of you remember Transformers? I remember, now see, I remember not just the Transformer cartoon and all that, but I remember when they were the toys. And I remember back in the day when they broke up. Uh, no, see, listen, you don't understand. When Transformers came out that first Christmas, oh my goodness, any and everybody wanted a Transformer. But guess what? They were selling the fake joints. <laughs> but look, I'm, I'm going to tell you because the truth is, watch this. Everybody had this because, you know, they had this fake gun transformer that was going around. And, and this fake gun, you know, it, it was everybody had it for Christmas. You know, some of the real kids, they got the real metal transformers. But, you know, I was a little hood kid. I hung out with the kids in Philly. They had the same thing. The little plastic joint. Anybody identify? Not the fake transformer. All right. <laughs> well, I got another one for you. Right. <laughs> so watch this. Another thing. Um, so back in the day, you know, of course, and, and you know, Nike's still popular, right? And so, you know, Nike back in the day, I remember when Nike Air first came out. And I remember I ended up, I think my buddy gave it to me. It was his or whatever. I don't remember where I got it from, but it was during the summer. And I remember it was a plastic Nike short set <laughs> that was bootleg. <laughs> it was like from the Chinese stores. See, Chris said, I got some kangaroos instead of Nike. Look, I had some BKs instead of Nike, but they were still brands. Kangaroos. You know, I look, I, but but back back in the day, look, I I, I wanted some Nikes and I had some kangaroos. I won't happy. I, I I'm with you, brother Chris. I'm with you. I had a pair. I hated them because <laughs> I wanted Nikes. Y'all gonna have me? Oh man, feeling some kind of way in here. But anyway, so but watch this. 
Everybody else had the nice little Nike sweatsuit, the real joint. I had that little plastic joint. That joint where, you know, if you sit out in the sun too long, <laughs> the joint might start that kind of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> and then then there was one other thing I had. Watch this, y'all. Back when everybody started rocking the leather jackets, I had one. You know, everybody had the nice genuine leather jackets. My tag, no, I didn't have, I ain't had pleather. The tag on the jacket said genuine leather look. <laughs> 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 genuine leather look i don't even know what the material was but I, I i better not get too close to any flames so here's a question what sets the real apart from a knockoff <laughs> it's durability okay his name what else Sometimes the quality, but really the name. The quality. Okay, the name. Okay, good. Anyone else? This isn't what you look at it, because you can get if you from far away, it will look real. Like. <laughs> you got them jump mans. I like them. You got them Jordans. You get it. You get up there, you get a what man? No, those ain't jump mans. They the what man? What in the world is it? <laughs> Man looking like a drunk Air Jordan. <laughs> y'all understand it? Now, why am I... Y'all like, okay, good. Chris said quality, price. Amen. That's good. So I want us to take a look and think about that as we go on to this next part. Y'all still with me? So we're going to read here in uh, Acts 13. Pardon me, not Acts 13, excuse me. Acts 19, verse 13. So watch this. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. I like to call this the knockoff deliverance. Why? Think. Let's look at this. So first off, they were Jewish. OK, we see that. Right. So they knew about Abraham, Moses. They knew about the blood and, and the exodus. They knew about all of this. Right. The Passover. They knew about the miracles of Elijah, the miracles of Elisha. And what was their job? Their jobs where they were what? Itinerant or traveling Jewish exorcists. This was their job. Hi, time to go ahead and punch the clock. Time to go cast out these demons. This is what their job was. All right. They would travel around from place to place to cast out demons. But, and welcome Anika Edwards. They did not have a relationship with Jesus. See, <laughs> yes, I got you, sis. She said, keep going on in the Lord. This is a blessing. Absolutely. We got you, sis. So they were familiar with his works. They were familiar with the miracles of Paul right. and seeing all this other stuff. They saw all the hype, but they didn't have a relationship with him, with Jesus, which would grant him the ability to use the power of his name. So let me put this in perspective. Imagine seeing a fully armed terrorist about to plant a bomb somewhere. All right. He got like 30 guns on. Right. Grenades, everything you see. Him, he got the bomb in his hand. He walking up to, to his location. And instead of calling, getting on the phone and calling, uh, look, I got a tip for the crime watch. <laughs> I, I think something about to go down and I'm about to leave town. Right. Instead of doing that, the FBI, ATF, whatever, you run up on them and say, I command you and I to stop doing what you're doing. And I arrest you in the name of the FBI. 
but you're completely unarmed. The only weapon you got on you is a belt to hold up your pants. And you don't have any identification. And you got on work clothes. Workout gear. I think he got a belt or something. So how would that turn out? For you to go up to this person, I arrest you to stop doing what you're doing in the name of the FBI. Stop it. Stop it now. How would that look? What, what, what would be the result? Somebody talk to me. <laughs> you said what? Are, are y'all seeing this? Why? Why would that happen that way? Yes. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, no authority, no power. Yeah. You have no power, no authority, nothing for him to recognize. See, are y'all understanding this? See, the problem is today. That's what happened. That's what happened here with the seven sons of Skeva. They were trying to use somebody else's power and authority that they didn't know of. People are, and we look at them and say they crazy, but guess what? Some people today do the same thing. Why? When they try to get the results of John 14, 12 through 14, and listen to this. And this is John chapter 14, verse 12. Listen. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. See, they trying to get the anything you ask in my name. But you know what they haven't fulfilled? They don't have the exclusive belief, the trust in, the relationship, and the understanding of John 14, verse 5 through 7. Y'all ready? Listen to this. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, what? I am the way, the truth and the life. Nobody getting into the father's house unless they come through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Wow. Let's see. Anika says healing from a terrible ac car accident. Was hospitalized for nine days and thankfully recovering at home now. Wow. Mm -hmm. Glory goes to our Lord and Father. Continue praying for me. I got you, sis. We definitely are going to be praying for you. You're going to the top of our list. So are, are y'all understanding and seeing this thing here? And you know what else they're missing? They're missing the loving obedience of John 14, 15. Same chapter. And what does he say? If you love me, keep my commandments. See, they trying to walk off the car lot, but they got terrible credit. You're trying to walk, walk off with the 0% financing, but you got 18 judgments on your name. And you ain't had a job in 18 months. You, you, you understand? You're trying to make a withdrawal where you haven't deposited. So here's a question for you and us today. Are you qualified and authorized to ask in the name of Jesus? Hmm. Wow. Woo. Absolutely. What qualifies and authorizes you? Mm. So as we see, the traveling Jewish exorcist tried to perform a third person authority exorcism. We exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, Jewish chief priests, who did so. The seven sons of Sceva, they were sons of the chief priests, the Jewish chief priests. They just watch this, y'all. 
they just knew that they were good based upon their pedigree, who their father was, their status, what they did, what ministry they worked in. But see, the problem is you can't expect to gain rewards based off of your parents' faithfulness. Exactly. What have you done for me lately? You got to walk it out yourself. So what was the response of their request when they tried to cast out this demon? What happened, y'all? He said, look at this. He said, watch this, y'all. And the evil spirit, Acts 19, 15, the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? Translation, watch this. And this is my version. I recognize those names, Paul and Jesus. See, those names ring a bell in hell. So I'm scared of them. But you ain't nobody. I ain't never heard of you. I don't see your ID badge. And this kind of reminds me of a situation and I was thinking back, you know, even as I was preparing, I was thinking of something, a story I heard. And this, how many of y'all heard of uh, Aretha Franklin? Everybody heard of the queen, right? R-E-S what? P-E-C-T. Well, there was a young lady that you may not have heard of named Mary Jane Jones. And back in the day, um, this concert promoter, basically contacted Mary Jane Jones and said, look, I need you to come and open up for Aretha Franklin. And he was down in Florida. And so she got down there, but then he switched it up. He was like, I need you to be impersonate Aretha Franklin. So we're going to put Aretha Franklin's name on the tickets and on the bill. And you're going to be the one singing. And so she got into trouble for it. She got a she got a had to go to court and all that. But then what ended up happening? The judge, um, he was like, "Look," he said, "Okay, I want you to sing something." And when she sang, she sounded just as good as Aretha. So he was like, "Well, they got their money's worth." <laughs> but. Why am I saying that? Because that was an excellent example of a knockoff. They didn't get the real Aretha. See, as we see here and look at what happened. Now, in the case of now, if this was the, the modern day, see, this was back in the day. So they, people only heard Aretha on the radio. You know, they ain't had posters. They ain't know what she looked like back then. You know, I, I ain't know. I ain't tell the truth. I ain't know what my favorite rap stars look like. So they started having videos. I ain't know how fat the fat boys were, how skinny they were. <laughs> right? So, but, so back then they didn't. But then when, but what ended up happening was with Aretha, so now that wouldn't fly. As soon as, it would be a big riot. We want our money back. They get ready to go up, rush, rush on the stage, beat her down, beat the promoter down. Right? So look at what happened. Verse 16. Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on him, overpowered him, and prevailed against him so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded, beat the brakes off of them, the pants off of them, and the boxers off of them, literally. They beat the drawers off of them. That's bad when you get beat down that bad. That's bad. You can't even show your face back in the neighborhood after that. That's like a beat and you just got to go move to another neighborhood, another city. Because, <laughs> you know, all they going to be, you, they, they oh, and you just see somebody whispering. And you know what they whisper. I remember when he got beat so down. Y'all understand it? And so watch this. It said, this became known just in the same way that we get around town. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them. All and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. <laughs> Chris said, Milly Vanilli stuff. Exactly. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. God was moving. It was the talk of the town. 
Hey, did y'all hear what happened to them Skiva boys? Man, that Jesus ain't no joke, bro. Man, you see the way they got whooped, man? Man, I was laughing my behind off, man. All I could see was just, man, that was crazy. Look at verse 19. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them. And it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. 50,000 pieces of silver back then is like several million dollars. There was an authentic motivation to come clean and repent. Here's a question for you. Can you imagine if that happened in your neighborhood today? If everybody said, you know what, man, I'm done. I can't do it. On Friday night, we were at a um, church, uh, Christ Chosen Church in Virginia Beach, and I had a chance to perform. And a young lady gave an awesome testimony. She shared how she was delivered from witchcraft. And one of the things she talked about, she shared how um, literally she basically wanted to, she had an, this fascination with wanting to know the future. And wanted, she was kind of anxious, you know, want to know what's going to happen or whatever. So something told her, she said, you know what? Let me go buy some tarot cards. And she bought some tarot cards and she didn't know how to use them. So she went to, she said, YouTube University. <laughs> and she learned how to use them and started, you know, reading the tarot cards and doing this. Then she started getting some crystals and, and starting getting some sage and some this and that. And she ended up sharing how, you know, she woke up. Well, one night she was having this dream and it got to be so crazy. She almost didn't even make it out of the dream alive, not just out of the dream, but we're talking about in real life. And hopefully she'll share her, you know, her um, we'll be able to see that at some point. So I could share that with you online, but it was very powerful. But because of that, she decided to come out of it. She left it. She got baptized. She started growing in the word of God. Because even in that dream, she said the only thing she could do, she said the only thing she remembered was the 23rd Psalm. And that's what she began to quote. And that broke it, the power of that demon that was attacking her in her dream. But notice, I can see that as she goes and tells that story, what's going to happen? Others who are experienced or exposed to the same thing, they're going to come out of it. That's what was happening then. Y'all seeing it? Amen. You're right. You're right on point, Shay. And so, as we, we're going to get ready to close out, we're going to land a plane, y'all. Y'all still with me? Yeah. All right. We circling. So I'm giving y'all, y'all the, the stewardess is coming around with your peanuts now. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they take it up the tray. They say, and put up your tray. There you go. All right. Here you go. So listen to this. So as a result, this is what was going on. The people who are practicing magic. They decided, look, we done. We giving all our materials back. We burning it. We don't need it. Then verse 21. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I've been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way. The way being what? The gospel, Christianity. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. This is how we get our money. Moreover, you see in here that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. These are fake gods. 
So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship. They were concerned because remember, they were in Ephesus. What was in Ephesus? The temple of what? Diana or Artemis. And so this was one of the seven wonders of the world. Guess what? They had a lot of tourism there. And what they would do is they would take and make these little metal statues and stuff like that at a temple and they would sell them. This is how they made their money. But now they like, yo, Paul's going around saying that this stuff is idolatry. This is fake. These ain't real gods. So now people ain't going to be believing in this no more. Now, guess what? Our stock's going to go down. They ain't going to want a Bible we got. So we got to do something about this. I want you to see something. The gospel, which is a spiritual system, impacted the economic system. Their belief. They were that entrenched in following God that they literally turned over the economy. Wow, they turned over the local economy. That's crazy. There were so many people abandoning false worship, the Diana Taurus items of the Temple of Artemis, that their sales were declining. And so now when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out saying, great is Diana, Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion. Nah, we, we rocking with Diana. Nah, we ain't rocking with them, them Jesus people. We rocking with Diana. This is, our, this is our statue, our temple. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord. Having seized Gaius and Aristar Aristarchus, Macedonians, Paul's tra travel companions. And when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples wouldn't allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another for the assembly was confused. And most of them did not even know why they had come together. Yeah. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting them forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours. Great is Diana the Ephesians. We want to hear what you got to say. Right? That's all they want. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, since these things can't be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and they're and there are lawyers, they're proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. Let them handle it there. This ain't the place. But if you have another in inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we're in danger of being called in question for today's uproar, the riot, and the reason was they would get in trouble by Rome for it. So, nah, we, we ain't trying to have that on us. There for being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. He turned around. There was a whole riot that happened because of the gospel. But even in that, God's peace still prevailed because it was nothing they could do. So now I got a question for you from after reading this whole stuff that we read about Ephesus, right? What do you think was their first love? Salvation being um, the first love would have been discipleship. Mm -hmm. And you know how we can tell that? They must have been doing something because it spread out throughout the entire region. They were so passionately in love with Jesus, they told everybody they met. It was their first love was the love of Jesus and a pure passion for his mission of discipleship. They loved him so much, they talked about him wherever they went. Mm. Do y'all remember what it was like knowing your first love? 
and how y'all remember you you think how when you thought about them and your face lit up and everything you know you could just walk into a room and just been with that person and everybody in the room would know something was different about you y'all remember that <laughs> what's up dj i rock welcome welcome what's up a corey jeep for jesus deny self so but watch this here's a question for you when was the last time that happened with you and jesus when you walked into a room and somebody knew you had been with jesus you walked into a room and jesus made your face light up and everybody could tell why they were passionately in love with their first love what about your first love what about our first love so next week we're going to continue on and um follow up on that and we'll learn a little, little bit about what happened to ephesus so we'll continue reading in revelation 2 and some of the other verses but we're going to see what happened to the church of ephesus all right, so thoughts, questions, comments, responses. I think, um, oh, you can, you can do anything? No. Um, I, two things came to mind just out of what you said. Yes, about our first love um, should be discipleship, which actually Jesus said that in Matthew 28, 19, when mm -hmm. he gave the, the great commission for them to go out and do that amongst nations. So by them forgetting their first love or leaving their first work, so how they word it in that way, um, they were actually being disobedient to what he previously commanded for his disciples to go out and do. Um, but I also thought it was interesting, um, especially like I'm a finance major. And so when I hear the economy and think of economics and the finances and 50,000 pieces of silver, in my mind, it, it also makes us think like, okay, like how can we make that applicable to us in today's time? And I think of, you know, there are a lot of, um, companies, organizations, things that we support financially that um, that are against God and are against His Word, and openly like like this is who we are, this is who our founders are, and this is why we do that. And then there are also organizations who are openly like, no, we stand for Christ, like Cookout and Hobby Lobby and mm -hmm. these types of places. So it's like, where are we? What are we doing with our dollar as Christians? Um, to crumble the economy mm. that's trying to build the kingdom of darkness and support the organizations and companies that are actually trying to uh, be God's light in that industry. Amen. That's real. That's real. That's good. That's real good. Anyone else? Thoughts, questions, comments, responses? I was thinking about how you, <clears throat> the very last part that you brought up, was like the expression of that something that you could be able to tell about that person that they have been the company of Christ. And of course it shows about the love because that's you know that's how he operates. Mm -hmm. And it has an effect on you that's you know of, of course it's it's of it's of a I want to say a positive nature, you know, just simply put. But when the same aspect that you brought up of Falling in love with somebody. Now, I'm, I'm getting to a point here. When you fall, when you if you fell in love with somebody before, and you realize that you're in love, it's not something that you want to keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's 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 something that you have a hard time keeping to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's that that other person has to tell you to go and tell other people about. It's something that you have a hard time keeping to yourself. Amen. That's real. And I believe that's where the Holy Spirit plays a part in. You know, it's just a matter of doing what we want to do anyway, and the instructions keep us motivated to do so. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit that's answering unto itself. Amen. That's good. I want to share something that um somebody wrote on a mixed cloud. Um back 40 gully said. At work every day. They let me know at work every day how there's a light that walks in with me and draw those that see to me. My mama told me that years ago and I didn't understand it. Now I do. 
she always told me to stop running. And like I said before, I didn't understand until I got into my 40s. Now I'm in my 50s, believing and knowing that the light is with me. Amen. Amen. And that's what I was going to say, too. Like, um, how, like, in that time, how they went out and the whole Asian minor was um, converted, if you will. Um, well, it didn't say they all were converted, well, but they all you know, but knew. They all, they all heard. They all heard, right? They all heard. Okay. So they were all, they all heard. And like he said, when he walks into his workspace, when I walk into my workspace, when people walk into my office at my job, most of the time I'm playing gospel music, you know, on low, but I, I'll have that conversation with them. I think the way that we do what they did in their time and our time is to show up at the space that we are all the time, which is Amen. I spend more time at work than I do at home, um, <laughs> is to show up as mm -hmm. a disciple in that space. And it doesn't have to look like traditional uh church or Amen. Gathering, that it can it can be uh subtle and one and and one on one and um kind of like uh whoops what's that um you know it and I, I don't know I think it was like Deuteronomy or something where they were like one can chase a thousand two can put ten thousand so I'm not really sure of, of the context of that because I've heard that preached in mm -hmm. different um ways but I feel like in the sense of what you're what, what you were saying, how it was 12 of them and they were able to get the gospel to five hundred thousand of people, whoever was in Asia, Asia Minor would be uh, a similar concept that we just show up. Amen. Well, one of the things that you remind me of is in that a couple of things. First of all, the you, you heard me you hear me quote this all the time. So shall men that you are my disciples, that you have what? Love, Love one to another. We got to we got to lead in love. We got to walk in love. We got to act in love intentionally. And then the other part is, um, you know, he says, so let your what light shine before uh, before men that they might see your what good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. And that's our responsibility every day. And so our responsibility is to preach and to share the love of God, but not even necessarily using words, but actions. Yeah. And I think so many of us, you know, we're so focused on the words that we haven't even learned the actions and got those right yet. Amen. All righty. So, uh, and one last, any other thoughts, questions, comments, last call before we get ready to close out? you can tell from the real and the fake mm -hmm. where it was made or who made it. Mm. Yes, sir. Absolutely. That stamp of authenticity. And see, for the believers, we've been sealed with what? His blood. And that's what he recognizes. That's what the enemy has to recognize. The same thing that happened in the Passover. When I see the what? The blood, I will pass over. Amen. So um, I was going to ask, going back to similar to what he was just speaking of, when you said uh, they don't have the power and authority, that relationship, that intimacy to like authorize, they're not authorized to do that, right? Yeah. So for us, just like practically moving forward, um, how would you say we cultivate that authority? Because I know like as far as the disciples, they they were with Jesus. They were mm -hmm. walking with Jesus. He reappeared to them, and then he sent them out, and then they were able to do the same. Um, but like for for us, is that you? Is is it, is it prayer? Is it study? Is it obedience? Is it like what? What is it that you would say for us would give us? Uh, if you could make sure you speak up, Marquita. That's why we don't need on our own understanding and in our ways of knowledge. He shall direct our path. So when we leave ourselves open and we're listening to the Holy Spirit, which comes from reading and hearing the word of God, then we are more attuned 
to where he wants us to go and he gives us that power. Because God orchestrates on the circumstances of which he may bring you into the path of someone that he wants to touch. So if he brings you into the path of someone who may be struggling, let's say with pain, and he will say into he will speak to you in the spirit and say, I want you to pray for me, then it's our job to receive what the Holy Spirit is saying, maybe not knowing how he's gonna heal him. But to be obedient. So by listening to the Holy Spirit and then being obedient when he orchestrates these interactions, that's the power and the authority that the Holy Spirit has given us to do his will because we're attuned to him. And we're not just doing our own thing, thinking that it's our own power. Amen. That's good. You know, and it and the one thing I would say, if I were to answer that in one word, relationship. It's our relationship with him. You know, what is your relationship like? Are you on the third person <laughs> status? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I would like to say thank you for bringing that up because I had people come to me recently and say, Miss Borden, I know you were Christian. I didn't know I was a Christian myself. Mm. I went to church. I mm. didn't think, but nobody was teaching me anything in church. Mm. But I was still going. Yes, ma'am. But as I got older, different people would come to me sometimes and they would be hungry or they had no clothes away, no way to stay. And I would share with them. Yes, ma'am. I had built a place for my sons to live, but my son was living up north and I was just by myself. Yes, ma'am. Well, I didn't know that and had nowhere to go or nothing to eat. I was just saying, I said, they were sitting across the street on the porch and everywhere. Mm. They had no sense so I offered if they cut my grass, I would they could stay in that back house back there mm. that I had back then. Mm. I would cook and had cook cook. I was cooking for the church. Mm-hmm. Feeding the hungry in the church. But I didn't know that these people were hungry also. Mm. And the food was left over. I would share with them. Come on. And now they come to me now. And Miss Boykin, you was a real Christian. I said, I was? So what did I do? <laughs> I was hungry when you gave me somewhere something to eat. Mm. I was out there. He had nowhere to stay. You gave me a place to stay. And I'll never forget you. Come on. I didn't know I was a Christian. <laughs> Nobody taught me nothing. <laughs> and you just smart. Love up today. That gives me, gives me a good idea of what it's all about. Amen. Jesus Christ. And yes, ma'am. He was leading me all the time. Amen. And I didn't know it. Come on. I didn't know. Nobody told me. Mm. I never thought about love. Not even myself. Come on. I just like to share. Amen. Mm-hmm. I just like to share. See? That, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Cousin Susie. Thank you so much. Wow. Whew. Well, it's about time to land a plane. Nobody surprised me. Nobody surprised me. And I'm 93 years old now. Come on now. Come on. I thank you. How are you doing? I thank you for this. You did this and you did that. Mm. I didn't know what I was doing. See, look. I was all about. I was just doing. See, you were just loving. That's the. But but you know what? That's the key. That's what we've got to do. We've got to, and, and first of all, we've got to learn how to receive God's love so we can reciprocate God's love to others. So, but, um, so yeah, that, that's it. I mean, we, it's, it's simple. You know, it, again, I, I try to, you know, I, I do a lot of deep stuff, but I, I keep it simple. You know, it's, it's love. And if we can master that, if we get that down, I think we might be getting somewhere. Amen. All right, but let's go ahead and get ready to pray. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing. All right. So let's go ahead and get ready to pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and bless your name. We give you honor and glory. We thank you for this wonderful time that you've given us, God, just to come together and to to celebrate and just to study and connect your word, Lord God. 
Thank you for helping us to read today the book of Revelation and understand how Ephesus has lost their first love. Thank you for helping us to discover and see what it was like how Ephesus started, Lord God. And my prayer, Lord God, is that you will do the same thing in us, Lord God, in our areas, in our cities, Lord God, beginning with us. It started with 12 and you turned out that whole area. Lord God, I pray that you will allow us to catch hold of the fire of your gospel. Let us become passionate about you and who you are, not what you can do for us, but who you are. Father, help us, Lord God, so that we can learn how to love others, even as Cousin Susie mentioned, in the way in which you intended. Father, we thank you. Thank you. And Father, for anyone who doesn't understand or needs some understanding, then Lord God, I pray that you will help us. Even as you said to the, the as the young man said, he said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Sometimes it's not what we know, but what we don't know and what we admit to not knowing. So, Father, I pray that you will help us to be who you've called us to be. And we thank you and give you honor and glory. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, your son, Jesus, we bless you. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today for P-Town Fresh. I hope this uh, has been a blessing to you. As always, we always like to give you something to take home with you to think about. And one of the things today, I think, is that, you know, just imagine if it started with them and their, their 12 just by sticking to their first love. What can happen if you return to yours? So look about and just pray this week and say, Lord, what would that look like in my life? To love those around me, to, to receive your love, to walk in my first love. And, and, and then if anybody out there needs some help or, you know, questions and understanding, then let us know. We got you. Some of you might be like, look, I've never been discipled. What's that discipleship thing? We got you. Holler at us. Let us know. We're here for you. All right. So the title, First Love. So, and this will be on, uh, whatchamacallit, YouTube, so make sure y'all subscribe. And um, we want to go ahead and get ready to close out. So, uh, and I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so messages in the chat, could you tell them about the, if they want to give? Oh, no, I didn't see it. In the chat. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. So, anybody wants to give? Thank you. My brain is gone. So, that's why I got my queen. So, if y'all want to join us this, oh, wow, son, this Wednesday. We'll be having a prayer this week, uh, six in the morning. So if you want the info, hit us up. We'll give you the link, the Zoom link. And it is, uh, you don't have to be on video. We are audio only. So you don't have to worry about you in your pajamas. Um, but it's 6 a.m. on Wednesdays. You're welcome to join us. We have a great time. Also, Lord willing, you see us back here next Sunday um, at 1230. And if you enjoyed, if you want to give, you're welcome to do so. Hit the link in the chat. Um, subscribe, share it with somebody, let them know what's going on. And we're about to go ahead and close out here because we got another little special uh, celebration that we're going to do. So love y'all. Be blessed. Oh.